everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lynn Wilson and welcome to my home. Tonight we're gonna talk about stockpiling recipes and cookbooks. And you might be saying, what do you mean stockpiling? Everybody talks about stockpiles with canned goods and cereal and rice and all that. Listen, to have a fully stocked home, we need to have a fully stocked home. And this is one of the things that I have been talking about on my channel of what are the things that we need to have in our homes that can just make our home a great place to be. A home that is fully stocked means we don't have to do as much shopping, we don't have to do as much collecting, and things like that. Now, with having a fully stocked home, I can verify you then become a bit, you could be a clutter bug, where you start to collect a little too much. And that's okay, because it just means that you've been living life, and I don't, I used to get worried about that, like, oh, I got this, and you know what, it's okay. It's my home, it's okay. I have survived, I will live, it is okay. But when you start to feel a little overwhelmed by things, or a little bit like, oh, I got too much, you know, or maybe I wanna make room for other things, or whatever the case might be, then it's time to kind of regroup, restock, and you know, look at what you have and say, you know, do I need this, do I use this? I think that's one of the points that I'm at in life is, you know what, I'm getting older and life has changed and evolved and my kids aren't home and I don't need the things that I used to need. And we're, our lifestyle is different. We're out and about more, we're doing things more. So there's things I just don't need as much of and that is recipes and cookbooks. But how many of us live through a bad situation. We lived through Hurricane Sandy. We had 13 days without power, electric, water, or anything. Now that's the extreme case. But you know, it could be a snowstorm for two days and you have no internet. My Wi-Fi, where we live, we're in the Pine Barrens of New Jersey, and our Wi-Fi, even on the best of the best, stinks. It just does. So there are days that, oh, I want that recipe. And you know, you're trying to Pinterest it or you're trying to Google it or whatever the case might be. I can't get on the Wi-Fi and I need that recipe. So here's pretty much what I have done. If it's a recipe I wanna try, it's something new, I need a quick reference, yes, I Google it, I Pinterest it, whatever the case might be. I also have, um, and I use the name um, Olivia. If you know what I'm referring to, a small device, but if I use her real name, she's right behind this camera, she's going to answer me. And I don't want her to answer me. But you can ask, those types of devices, we have an Echo, uh, we have one device upstairs, we no longer call by the proper name, we call it computer, just so we can separate our devices. But we could ask for recipes on that as well. So, I have enjoyed collecting cookbooks. Now, I like collecting cookbooks and reading a cookbook on a cold winter's night or on a warm summer day, I enjoy reading cookbooks as if it is a reference book or just a good reading book. I love reading cookbooks. I don't have as much time at home as I would like because I work outside the home to do all these recipes. I have visions of grandeur of all the things I'm going to do in my kitchen and I only do a little bit, but that's okay. One day I'm going, going to be able to do it. I'm gonna just show you around here a little bit. So I have a stack of cookbooks here, as you can see, and then over here, I have some of my smaller cookbooks here, and then down below here, whoop, bring me down here, I have got a selection of cookbooks here as well. So let me just show you some of the things from here that I have. This is one my sister gave me, and I treasure it because she sent it to me um, just because, and it's called The Gathering of Friends. I have read this book, it has decorating ideas, it has recipe ideas, it has notes and all kinds of things. I have done one or two recipes from it. I will continue to keep this on hand because it's nostalgic, it is sentimental, and there's some good recipes in it. Listen, that's my logic. Um, this one we picked up, we took a trip to Virginia when our oldest son was I don't even know if he was a year old, and there was a lot of things down that way about slavery and all of that, and this is a cookbook, African American Heritage Cookbook. I don't think I found a recipe in here that 
maybe would suit my taste, but I picked it up because my youngest son is adopted and he is African American. And we want to treasure his heritage in our home because he is our family and that is part of our family and this is part of our heritage now. So I wanted to have a cookbook and I said to my husband, if at some point down the road, he wants to do a little study up on his own heritage, I wanna have that available to him. So this cookbook is probably about 18 years old in our home. It's never been used, but it will stay in our home because of my son, if he ever wants one, I have a cookbook to match his heritage. This cookbook I picked up when I was in Scotland many, many, many moons ago. Scottish Cakes and Baking, I've used this over and over and over. I love this cookbook. Not only is it sentimental, but I actually use it and love it. Uh, let's see what else. This is a cookbook, easy to cookbook. This is a child's cookbook. Okay, I, I don't know if you remember back in the day when you were in school and they had, you could like a book club and you can uh, fill out this form and bring in your $2 and go to the book table and buy books. I don't know if you remember that. I loved doing that. And this is a cookbook that I picked up from there. And I just saved it because it's something I had as a kid and I used to cook out of it. The pages are actually browned and brittle. And my kids actually use this, and it's just kid-friendly recipes. There's some really good ones in there. I probably will save that one day and maybe give it to my grandchildren and tell them their grandma, you know, it was her cookbook. Um, this is a cookbook from my in-laws church, tried and true recipes from people that we know in our family. So as you can see, there are several cookbooks there that I plan on keeping for various reasons. This one is Do It On Dining on a Dime Cookbook. I bought this probably 20 years ago, if not more, it's falling apart. I use it all the time. This is a recipe box. So I picked this up, I had all these recipes. Let me bring it up so I don't have to keep bending here. This recipe box is full of old recipes. It was in a metal recipe box, if you remember those little tin metal ones from my grandmother-in-law. She kept it on the back of her stove and when she passed away, I grabbed it as a sentimental keepsake. I'm at a point now where, and I've used several of her recipes. I've used many of them, but I'm at a point now, I think I'm gonna go through them and thin them out. A lot of them were recipes that she collected from friends and clippings from newspapers and you know magazines, but I don't need all of these. So I did pick up this nice wood box. It looks like somebody actually handmade it in one of the thrift shops in Lancaster, Pennsylvania for 25 cents. I put the recipes in there because the metal one was getting rusty. It was green. It was an ugly green. So they're in here, but I have to thin those out. Now, even with thinning those out, let me bring you back down here real quick. The rest of what is here, I need to thin out. I need to start thinning that out. Now let me bring you up here a little bit and show you, uh, yeah, show you these here. Okay, I'm gonna hold the camera over here so you can see it. I have this canning one, I have a Betty Crocker, I have another Betty Crocker, and I have a bread one, and I have a few other recipe uh, or cookbooks here. So I'm gonna explain what some of these are. So this is a great Better Homes and Garden complete canning cookbook. I do canning. I used to do canning when I first got married. I stopped canning for years and right before COVID, not because of COVID, but right before COVID, I started wanting to get back into it. And I did, and I got back into it, but I've never used this book yet. What I think I need to do is go through this. Canning to me, there's only certain recipes that I like to do. I've tried a variety of canning things. There's some things I just can't be bothered doing anymore. And there's a lot of things I wanna try. I need to go through this. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it. I got it at a thrift store. This is a Betty Crocker. I love vintage cookbooks, so I picked that up. I have, this one was my grandmother's, and it is old. I mean, it is like the original, original metal, uh, a metal side, as you can hear. And I don't know if I'm gonna keep it, though. As much as I love it, it's one of those things, it's like after a while, how much can you keep? So I'm not really sure. This one I love keepers keeping the harvest 
how to store foods, how to preserve food, how to build a garden, how to do canning. I mean, it is an old book. It is old. I had picked this up, I think it was a quarter for, at a thrift shop. And this was a dream of mine to have a root cellar. So I have that. I have another cookbook. I have another cookbook here from when I was a child that I've kept for nostalgic reasons. But then I have other things here that, I, these are some books. This is one that Homestead Tessie had recommended. I picked it up, but I really, she loves it. I don't think it's for me. So there are a lot of cookbooks up here that I need to go through in this section. Probably half of these are going to be going out. Now, if we come over here, let me bring it up a little closer here. And you can see. So these are all my smaller ones that I have here. This one, I don't know if you ever watch Clara's Kitchen. She has a YouTube video. She's no longer alive, but she does a lot of depression cooking. This is one of the best books I ever got when I first got married. I keep it with my cookbooks because I don't know where else to keep it. How to Clean Everything. This book is fantastic. This is the original Betty Crocker's cookbook my mother got me at my wedding shower. This is probably, out of all the cookbooks I have, this is my go-to. I go to this for everything. If I need to know how to cook, this is the one I go to. So this one is not going anywhere. I have some other cookbooks up here as well that I'm, I need to go through. I need to thin So out. why am I telling you about stockpiling cookbooks and recipes when I'm telling you I'm getting rid of things? Okay, a couple of quick notes. One is, I think we should stockpile recipes that we use all the time that we really like. So I cleaned out, there's a nice stack, look at that mess. So you know how you rip something out and you stick it in a pile? Well, you know, I'm sure you all have piles like me and we need to go through them. And I just have recipes that people wrote down for me. Um, yeah, just, you know, macaroni and cheese recipe, bonbon cookies. I went to someone's house and they had a great, you know, cookie or whatever, and I liked it and I wrote it down. Um, I have all kinds of recipes here. I'm just looking through that snow tunnel cake. Some of these I don't remember anything pavlova. If you're anyone is Scottish, you probably know what pavlova is. And I have all these recipes that I have collected, but I don't know half of them if I'm going to use them or not. I need to go through them. But what I do like to do is keep the recipes that I use all the time. Like I have a certain biscuit recipe. I have a certain pancake recipe and so on. I actually will put them on index cards or a piece of paper and on the inside of my kitchen cabinets. My mom taught me this. I just tape them up. This way when I go to bake something, you know that one chicken recipe I use over and over and over. I'm not good at memorizing the recipes, but I can just open my kitchen cabinet and they're hidden, no one else sees them but me, and they're in a good place. But I do have a notebook with those clear sheets that you can put paper in. And I wanna put some of my other regular recipes that I wanna save, maybe I've cut out from a notebook or from a magazine or something, or someone gave me that ones that I know are tried and true and I wanna keep, I'm gonna put those in those sleeves so they stay clean and I need to go through these recipes and thin them out as well. If the power goes down, if the internet goes down, these are times that you're gonna to want to keep hard copies of recipes on hand. I just think it is good to have those things. I know some people, the younger people, want everything digitalized and I, I like that too. I like things being on the internet, but you can't always access those things. And there's certain recipes that maybe somebody has made in a certain way that I'm like, why does your, your cookies taste so much better than any recipe I've ever had? Well, they put a little special something in it. So those recipes I want to keep on hand. Here's a few other ideas. I had picked this up, Taste of Home Fall Cooking. This is probably about a year old. I picked it up at a thrift shop. I showed you guys and I said I wanted to do some great recipes and cooking in this and we've never done that. Why? Because I got busy and I forgot I had this. I tucked it away with a bunch of other books and found it the other day. So I went through it and I kind of highlighted some recipes I want to try and I promised myself between now and the end of the year I must make five recipes out of this cookbook. That was my promise to myself. If I made five and I was happy with them I might keep the cookbook. If I don't make the five recipes, or I make them and I don't like them, the cookbook's going out. I, I need to start thinking through what do I have 
I want to thin it down so that the things that I do have for me create a full, fully stocked pantry of recipes and cookbooks that I can refer to, but I don't want to be overwhelmed and go, oh, which cookbook do I look in? Which one's better? Which one has, I need to start organizing them and doing things a little bit better. Here is a great one that I thought, Lancaster Amish country. If any of you are from that area or have been to that area, know that Plain and Fancy, Miller's Smorgasbord, and Miller's Bakery, right? Three great places. If you've been from that area, these are like well-known places. The recipes in here are listed very simply, and they have all their famous, famous recipes. Their broccoli salad, um, herb chicken, baked apples, potato casserole. They've got all their great recipes that are in here, and I bought this again. I think this was 10 cents at a thrift store. I've had this for several years. I've never made one recipe out of it. I finally sat down the other day on the couch and I went through it. And none of these recipes in here would be something that me and my family would eat often enough for me to, to warrant that this takes up a foot, footprint space in my pantry of recipes and cookbooks. So this one is definitely going to be donated again. Why do we stockpile things? Because there are things we want to use. We, and when you stockpile, what is the one thing you do? You rotate your items. So rotating your cookbooks is the same thing. You might get one for a quarter, a dollar at a yard sale, at a thrift store, maybe somebody gives you a couple. Go through them, highlight the recipes that you like. If you only find two in the cookbook that you've made that you really like, you can always photocopy those pages and stick them in a sleeve in a notebook. But I think too, just like everything else, you wanna rotate what you have. You wanna keep things within a, um, an amount of storage that you're comfortable with, that doesn't overwhelm you. And I know a lot of us like to collect things and collecting cookbooks might be a great thing if that's the only thing you collect. But if you like things like I do, I am starting to regroup and look at things in my home and say, you know what, I think I have too many of those things. They're starting to bother me. When things start to bother me, I need to size down. But I think it is so important that we keep really good recipes. I used to teach an adult uh, class at a business college. I taught there for seven years. At the end of every, um, you know, at, the, at a graduation part, we would have this big party and everybody would bring in their favorite dish. But I told them, the rule in my classroom was if you brought in a dish, you must bring the recipe on a recipe card. Because you, how many times have you eaten something and you're like, who made this? I gotta get the recipe. So I made them bring in their recipes and some of the things I still use to this day, and I taught probably 25 years ago, I'm still making those recipes and loving them. So I would like to know from your side, do you like to just use the internet? Do you use recipes tried and true that came from friends and family? Do you like to use cookbooks? Do you have a favorite cookbook? I'd love to get some feedback from you guys. Thanks for coming over tonight. Thanks for sharing your time with me. And don't forget, I'll see you all on the next video.